and clean so they're white like snow. That's why it's called Whitson. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Fun facts for you there. So I just want to read about the first Pentecost, um, and then I'm going to lead us in a time of communion. So before Jesus went up to heaven, after he died on the cross for our sins and rose again, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said to them, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then they wait a few days and we read these amazing words in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Just imagine that in this room. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Pentecost is all about God pouring out his Spirit into our lives. That means that God himself, his very presence, is in us if we're believers. And then Peter preaches this blinding sermon, just this amazing talk all about the fact that we need a rescuer and that God has provided a Savior in Jesus. And then we read these words. When the people heard this, the sermon that Peter had had preached, they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that Peter had just received himself. He says to them, if you repent, if you're baptized, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. Tonopandi is far, far away from Jerusalem. This promise is for us today, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And in that little mini sermon that Peter preached, he said, repent. And I just want at the very start of our meeting for us to take a bit of time to repent because it's, it's Pentecost Sunday. It's a time where actually we want to draw near and ask God for more of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers. But the recipe in the New Testament for having more of the Spirit in your life is repenting to God and coming to him. So we're going to take communion now um, at the very start. And communion is a meal that reminds us of the death of Jesus in our place for our sin. Just take a moment just to remind yourself of what your week has been like. I know I have failed God this week. I know I have failed other people this week. I know that I've made mistakes. But I also know that I have a saviour who loves me and who died for me. And as you take the bread in a moment... The bread is, set, is symbolizing that Jesus took the punishment and the guilt and the shame that we each feel for the wrong things that we've done this week or in our lives. He took that on him so that we don't have to, so that today we can be free. So like Whitson means we can be white <laughs> like snow this Sunday. And the grape juice it represents the blood of Jesus that washes us clean. There's a verse that says, though our sins were like scarlet, like the color of that grape juice, we will be made whiter than snow. And so I just want to pray, and then I'm just going to leave a minute of silence where we can take communion where we are. And at this point, I just want to say, if anyone's watching or in the room and you wouldn't describe yourself as a Christian, this is a moment like those people at the very start of the book of Acts when Pentecost happened and Peter preached this sermon to say, what must we do? The answer is repent. Come to God. Say, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. I'm sorry that I failed you. I'm sorry that I've lived my life without you. I want to turn and I want to follow you. So let me pray. And then we're going to take communion together. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that when you died on the cross, you died for us. For every person sat on a seat in this room, you died for them. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Right now, we come to you and we repent. We say we're sorry. We turn from our old way of living. We turn from our selfishness, from living according to the ways of this world and the ways of our crooked hearts, and we turn to you. We thank you that when we turn to you, we don't see a grumpy God who is cross with us, but we see a God who has arms wide open, 
saying, come home. Thank you that we can run to you. Thank you that your kindness leads us to repentance. And so right now, we want to say we're running into your arms. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to have a moment of silence. Take communion as you feel ready. Thank you, Jesus, that even as we take communion now, we're reminded again that you have washed us whiter than snow. And I pray for every person in this room who've placed their faith in you in this moment, that they won't just know in their heads that they're forgiven, but that we will each feel in our hearts that washing and cleansing of your Holy Spirit in us, that we will know that our sins have been removed from us as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a great way to start a service, I think, taking communion. Um, And then the next thing that he says in here is be baptized, which leads me to the notices, which are that next Sunday we're not going to be, hopefully, God willing, (laughs) we're not going to be in this building. We're actually going to be down at the beach, which beach is is a detail that we haven't quite decided on yet. Um, But the plan is that we're going to be doing baptisms next Sunday on the beach. The weather currently is looking good. Plan B is that we've hired a baptistry pool to be in here, so baptisms will be happening next week, even if the weather changes halfway through the week. But the plan is that we're going to be meeting at a beach, and we'll let you know where, um, next Sunday at 2 p.m. in the afternoon to do a baptism service. Now, here's the tricky stuff with the COVID rules. We can have 50 adults outside for an organized activity, so we will be doing a sign-up that will have 50 adult spaces. The beach is also a public place, so if you don't get a space and you happen to be at the beach, there's nothing that we can do to stop you, okay? Um, The the second thing is that at 12 o'clock next Sunday, Lucy and I are going to go and have a picnic on the beach. If you also turned up then, you might find us there, Um, but we're not organizing that as an activity. Okay, But if anyone happens to be there for a picnic on the beach at 12 o'clock, then you'll also bump into us at a two-metre distance. Um, I hope that's clear to everyone. Um, But that is a really, really exciting day. We've got a handful of people that we're baptising who are saying that they've repented, that they're following Jesus. Um, And, yeah, it's going to be a really, really exciting time. So we'd love you to be there. Um, Two other notices before we really get going. Um, men's breakfast. We're, we're going to be doing our first ever men's, bre- well, first men's breakfast since uh, lockdown. This coming Friday in this building, it's 6.30 in the morning, unless enough men that want to come tell me that's too early. Okay? So if that's too early, tell me. But otherwise, hopefully it helps people who've got work to get to. 6.30, we're going to have some breakfast. Um, we're going to read the Bible. We're going to have a chat. Um, and we get a chance to pray for each other. Um, There's going to be a sign-up for that as well that we'll send out, and it'll be fantastic to see the men of the church there. And then the last notice, um, before we sing a song, so band, you might want to get ready, uh, is that we are going to be starting a really, really exciting new ministry in the life of Hope Church in the Tonopandi site. We're going to be starting Hope Toddlers, and there should be a slide for that. Um, And so Paul and Jane, a.k.a. my mum and dad, give us a wave, Paul. Oh, you've got a baby now can't do that. Um, He's the one with the baby. Um, They're going to be starting a new ministry, Hope Toddlers, um, and they would love some people who want to help to get in touch with them and express an interest. Um, It's something we've wanted to do as a church for a while, but we just haven't been able to. Um, And I'm really, really excited for us providing a service for our community. There are so many toddler groups that just aren't open anymore because of COVID. And it's a great chance to get to know our neighbours, 
to get to know them, to build relationships, to show them the love of Jesus in a practical way. And if you would like to help, um, then please chat to Paul or Jane. That would be great. Okay, so we're going to do our first song, and Ben Franks is here. Hey, I managed to stall enough time for you to get here, Ben. That's quite good, isn't it? Um, Ben's just come for a very long drive from Liverpool, so we can forgive him for that. Um, we're going to sing a song, uh, and we're going to worship God. We can't, we can't sing out loud. These guys can sing, but we can still worship God. So please, can you stand? Um, we've already said that, that we're here. We're here for God. His Holy Spirit is here. We've already seen that in the book of Acts from Pentecost, that his Holy Spirit has been poured into our hearts. He wants to meet with us now. And this song is a chance for us to say, we're here to meet with him. So Jesus, we're here to meet with you. Holy Spirit, we're here to meet with you. We we surrender our lives to you afresh. Lord, we want to meet with you now. Help us to do that. Help us to worship. Amen.
Yes, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you this afternoon. We say, be poured out on us. Thank you for that first Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was poured out. Thank you that that promise is for us here now, that your Spirit will be and continuously poured out on us. Lord, we pray you do that. Thank you for your presence here with us. We pray you keep, keep meeting with us, keep working in our hearts, keep pointing us to Christ as we continue our meeting. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Feel free to take a seat. I love that song. Uh, just, it just links to something that Peter said in, in his sermon. He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. It's a great promise. It's a promise that we believe in. Um, and in a moment, uh, you know, prophecy in the Bible is, is people speaking with their words, things that God have, has revealed to them. And in a moment, I'm going to invite Dom to come up and speak to us. Um, and I'm going to pray for him before he does, that actually we would hear not Dom's words in Dom's voice. We want to hear them in Dom's voice. That would be weird otherwise. But we want to hear God's words to us. But before I pray for Dom, um, we're going to show a little video clip. Uh, in, in Family Church, which we did this morning, um, Lucy made a fantastic recap video of where we've got to in John. This is what we showed the kids, um, just to bring us up to speed, um, the story so far in the, the Gospel of John, this biography of Jesus' life. Um, so we're going to play that video, then I'll pray for Dom, and then he's going to come and speak to us. These are the stories about Jesus we've heard so far. The book of John starts by showing us that Jesus is God's son, and lots of people started to listen to him. Jesus chose 12 people to be his followers, called disciples. They weren't special. In fact, they were a ragtag bunch of nobodies, but they were important to Jesus. Then, at a wedding, there was a problem. The wine had run out. Now, this would have been pretty embarrassing for the bride and groom. But Jesus did an amazing thing. He turned six large jars of water into wine. Phew. Then, at a festival called the Passover, Jesus went to the temple because that's where people would go to meet with God. But people had started to turn the temple into a marketplace. Now Jesus made everyone get out because knowing God and being his friend is special. The people had forgotten God. Later, at a well, Jesus said to a sad and lonely woman, I am the water of life. He showed her that we all need to have a drink of water. But more importantly, we all need to know Jesus. He is the best. Word about Jesus spread, and lots of people came to see him for help. One time, a man's son was really poorly, and the man found Jesus to ask him to heal his son. And at the very moment Jesus said, Your son will live, the man's son was better. Another man couldn't walk for 38 years, and Jesus told him to pick up his mat. And he did. Jesus healed many other people and everyone was amazed at the things he said. One day, a huge crowd followed him into the countryside to hear what he had to say. But it got late and there was nowhere to buy food. There was a boy in the crowd with five small bread rolls and two small fish. Jesus prayed to God and the disciples handed out the bread and fish. Everyone ate enough. And there were 12 baskets of food left over. There were over 5,000 people in that crowd. So Jesus went off on his own, and the disciples got into a boat to cross the lake. In the night there was a storm on the lake, and the disciples were really scared. But then they saw a man walking to them on the water in a storm. It was Jesus. He got into the boat. Even though they had been in the middle of the lake, they found themselves at the shore, safe from the storm. Amazing! The next day, lots of people from the crowd rushed across the lake in their boats to see what Jesus would do next. He said to them, I am the bread of life. He was showing the people that they didn't just need bread like from his miracle the day before. They needed something that wouldn't run out. They need to know Jesus and be friends with God. And that is the story so far. 
That's the story so far. We had a fantastic time in family church this morning. Um, I'm just going to pray for Dom and then hand over to him. Thank you, Lord God, for all the things that we've learned so far in the Gospel of John. Thank you for all of the amazing things that we've seen about Jesus. Lord, we pray that, that now you would anoint Dom, that you would fill him, that you would speak through him, that he would be able to speak from your word and prophetically to us now. Lord, we pray that we will, we will walk away from here seeing Jesus more clearly for ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Dom, over to you. Hello. Hello. Is that coming through all right? How are we doing? Some of you know me, I'm Dom. I'm Jenna's husband. I haven't had a chance to, to meet you all yet, uh, properly. But one thing I want to tell you is, I love you, man. I'm going to start with that. That's one of the first things I'm going to say to you and one of the last things I'm going to say to you all the time I know you. I love you. And I'm so pleased to be here. Like, it's the first time with me speaking to you all and encouraging you all, ministering to you all, and to everyone that's on live stream. Is it on? Yeah. And to you guys too, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. This is the first time I'm going to speak a word, I'll be honest with you. But it's a, it's a calling that God has had on my life for so long. And I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with you, I've just ran away from it just not accepted that I was ready to do it. And I'll tell you what, it's, I've titled this, this word, it's hard to be a Christian. And the many times that I've ran away from fulfilling what God wants me to do is literally because it's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to, to do anything that comes into what Jesus wants us to do. You know, it really is difficult. And I'm going to try and unpack um, the end of John 6 now. And, and I love what you said, Simon, that I'm not, coming, I'm not coming to stand up here and say anything, nothing. I've got, Dominic has nothing to say to you right now. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But God, through me, because I'm his vessel, I know he's going to impart something to you. I know you're going to be encouraged by God, what he has to say to you, you're going to hear from him. And if I can stand up here and stop running away and, and allow me to be used by God to do that to you, then, then hallelujah, I can spend the rest of my life just, just knowing I've done the only thing that matters. And that's be faithful to Jesus when it's been hard to be a Christian. Just being so faithful to him. So the reading is uh, John 6, and we're going from verse 60 to 71. And hopefully my Bible won't get blown off by this fan. <laughs> so that's John 6, verse 60 to 71. And it is going to come up on the screen, so you'll, uh, you'll get a chance to follow it there. But if you've got your Bibles, definitely. John 6, verse 60 to 71, it starts with, On hearing it, many of disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered, Lord, I love this answer. Verse 68, Simon Peter answered him. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, I have, not, have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. 
who, who though one of the twelve was later to betray him. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray. I just want to pray really quick. Lord Jesus. We love you so much. We thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that you're going to speak to us. Encouraging us. Filling us with more of you. We are so grateful that you speak to us. That you not only died for us being an atoning sacrifice to bring us back to salvation, to bring us back to God out of this fallen world, but we can, we can hear from you now and just be encouraged in life and have life to its fullest until that great and glorious day. And I pray that you'll speak so clearly that our hearts will be refreshed to live another day and to go on into next week just so close to you, Lord, more prepared for your work, able to do it. We love you so much, Jesus. Amen. So I titled this, this word, you're going to see me do that a lot. I've done it like four times, drinking water now, trying to scratch my nose. So I've titled this word, It's Hard to Be a Christian. And it is hard to be a Christian. How many times have we, we really not got to a place where we just want to throw in the towel? We just want to wave the white flag, whatever you want to call it. Just say that prayer again to Jesus and say, I can't do this no more. It's really tough. Like, is, is there another way that I, can, that I can just have your benefits, Jesus, but but not go through the trials and the suffering and the difficulties that, that God uses, uses us. He, he uses them, all the difficult times to refine us, change us, shape us and bring us close to him and especially to fulfill what he wants us to do. You know, it's, it's hard. Some of you have been through it. I know you've been through it. And if you haven't, you go into like, I'm just going to prepare you right now. Like, if you haven't had difficult times following Jesus, stepping out with Jesus, they're coming like, you know, and Jesus is the only one through relying on him that can sustain us through it. Um, I've had so many times and I, and I could one after the other, they wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to remember them all right now. I'm sure a lot of you won't as well where there's been times where you just know that you've just got to lay yourself prostrate on the ground and just talk to Jesus and just give him your heart. And because you can't do this in your own strength, like, oh my days, I can, honestly, I can give you so many examples where Dom has tried to do it in his own strength and, and even trying to do good, trying to do things that Jesus wanted me to do. So I thought, yeah, yeah I'll just crack on with it. And I've left out the prayer, I've left out reading the Bible, I've left out um, coming to church and, and, and properly fellowshipping with other Christians. You know, the Bible says, don't forsake the. The gathering, don't, don't stop meeting together, you know. I know it's hard with COVID, and that's a different story altogether, isn't it? But don't, don't forsake uh, making a phone call when you're struggling uh, to be encouraged by your brothers so we can pray for one another, sharing each one, one another's burdens, you know. But there's, when we really get to that place and we just lay it down and just surrender and let Jesus be our strength, that, that's the place where things start to get easier, you know? Because we can struggle and we can struggle and we can struggle when all God is saying, lean on me. Cast, Jesus says it clearly. He says, cast your burdens on me, you know, because he cares for us and he will sustain us. Um, it's, with the disciples in this, in this passage, when it comes to... When it comes to why they actually uh, were offended and um, why they wanted to run away like I did. It is verse... Sorry, I had all these highlighted, but the printer's printing them out black, so just give me a second. Hmm. Yeah, this verse. Go, going a little bit back uh, into 
not what I've just read and what my sermon is on, but verse 53, we went from 60 to 71. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, this is verse 53 again, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Now, I've got John Wesley's study Bible, and I love what John Wesley puts. With that scripture where Jesus says about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, um, John Wesley puts, the disciples did not like the idea that Jesus must die and that they and we must be identified with his death in order to receive salvation. To be identified with Jesus' death, like. And we, can can we really sit there and say that we are prepared to die for Jesus, like martyr is the word? Are we we prepared to die for Jesus? If, if If you had to lay down your life, are you prepared to do it? Because that's really tough, like, isn't it? You know, we, we spend our whole lives trying to avoid death. COVID-19, we've got loads of examples in there, haven't we? We've got loads. Like, why we're wearing, all wearing masks and why we sanitising uh, everything's in there, isn't it? Why, why we're protecting ourselves from death. And it's a tough thing, isn't it? To, we fear death. We, we don't... Even as Christians, like, death can be scary. Let's have it right. If a lorry was to swerve on the motorway and be really close to coming through the crash barriers into your car, you're going to be frightened, aren't you? You know, maybe you're going to be frightened of pain, you know. But when you stand before Jesus, like, and I can sit here and say this, there's some things, like, I have to constantly take to the Lord and say, forgive me, Jesus, forgive me, because I'll get judged on that day and I need to, I need to make sure that I've confessed it to you and, and your blood has washed me and I'm forgiven and... I can just rest in that, knowing that his grace covers me, you know. But with the disciples, when they, um, they ran away like I did, because things got tough. You know, it's, uh, sorry, I've gone off a bit then. I'm having a little rant, but I'll come back to it now. It's a hard saying to accept. You know, that we are identified with Jesus' death, you know. But the, the difficulties of just being a Christian, just having to... Um, the men will know this. I work in construction, um, and it's a really... It's a, it's a tough place, you know, where men are always... Uh, what's the word? We just get on each other's nerves, and, you know, and pride comes out. So being a Christian in that environment... And there's things that women will totally be able to, that will be thinking of now. You know, there's, there's difficult times for them too. But um, when it comes to me being in construction, like, because some of you don't know my testimony, but I had a lot of pride and it took me to, pri- I'll just say this briefly, but it took me to prison quite a few times. It took me to a, quite a big sentence last time and I, I was on an indeterminate life sentence. I was a naughty little boy before Jesus got hold of me. But, um, and I had a lot of pride, still can have a lot of pride. It could pop out sometimes. But when I was, when I'm in construction, and to be a Christian and to lay down your pride constantly, you know, and if I'm not prayed up, if I'm not really letting Jesus take my heart, transform me, change me, renew me, reading my Bible and praying every single day, believe me, old Dom can come back, like, and I can have, like I said just earlier on, I can have more things that I have to just, just lay down, like, when I didn't need to, before Jesus, say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But then, if we, if we really get that, that Jesus is our strength, that we, we just use him every single morning, filled with his spirit, and we just meditate on his word, to let our hearts be really sanctified, then I, I'm a totally different guy when I'm at work. I really am. Like there's, there's So many things can really upset me where I where I should be, well, I can look back at it and I can see the difference. I should have been raging, you know, I should have been really upset or, or uh, I would have cold shouldered somebody for days, you know. But when Jesus has changed my heart, completely changed it, I can, I can, I can just react how he would, you know. 
And there's a love there. That's the most beautiful thing about a heart completely changed and sanctified in Jesus. You know, the, the things that we found hard, especially for pride, you know, for me and for when I'm at work specifically, but you'll be able to apply this to everything, you know, with, with hearts changed in Christ. I can just literally love people when they're on, getting on my nerves, when they're, they're causing so many difficulties for me. Um, yeah, I can just be filled with love and it can outweigh any kind of uh, feelings that I've... Negative feelings. And, and I wouldn't want it any other way because I'll tell you what, once, once we're saved, and, we, and, and some of you know this, like, you're never the same again when it comes to, to wanting to love people. You can't not love. Your heart won't allow it. Like, if you, if you do something, the Holy Spirit's always just coming against you and nagging you and and I love that you know counselling is a word I use the word nagging because I don't listen sometimes and it feels like he's nagging when really he's just convicting and loving me and, and building me up and being so faithful I'm just going to try and get back to what I was reading because I'm going off on one I love this answer in verse 68. Simon Peter answers the Lord. Whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This is, yeah, verse 68, sorry. You have the words of eternal life. We have come to know, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. I love this answer, you know, in this passage. And this, like I said, I've been, I, I ran away quite a few times from the call of God and, and from the refining fire. Some of you, are, I guarantee you've resisted in some way, you know. We can all be honest, like, it's just, it's just what we do, you know. We don't, we don't want to do it. But this answer is just awesome, like, that we have come to believe and know, where are we going to go? Like, once we've truly tasted and we've gone through the difficulties of, of change and shaping, where are we really going to go? Like, if we try to resist, if the creator of heaven and earth sends his son Jesus to die for us and then asks us to do something, you know, when he's all, all seeing, <laughs> all knowing, he's that omnipresent, you know, we, what are we going to do? Like, we're going to have to we're going to have to really just dig in and submit, aren't we? And I love that answer. I really do. It's, when I first read this, it was the scripture that really, really just struck my heart. Like, I'll just read it again. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Are we going to go through the difficulties the struggles, the trials, and the changing and the shaping. Are we going to lay our lives down every single day, prostrate on the floor and just pray to Jesus for that change of heart, that change of mind, circumstance, that change of mind, and just allow him to fill us to overflowing? I know I am. Because isn't, where else are we going to go? Where else are we going to go? Back into the world. Just to be around for a few years. This is a drop in the ocean to eternity. It's not an option. But God saves us. He saved me. And even when I chose to run away. <laughs> even when I chose to resist him. When it was hard to be a Christian. He just kept being so full of grace, so full of mercy. And there's difficult things that come into our lives that are really tough. Really, really, really tough. Things that, oh, they were so tough, like, you probably, you don't even want to bear thinking about them, you know. It's, <clears throat> again, I can give you so many testimonies where I've been in exactly the same place. And sometimes, like, they still hurt. I still have to keep praying to God and saying, Lord, it's rising up again. Give me strength. Give me your mercy. Give me 
your peace, fill me with your joy again. Just relying on him. Wholeheartedly just relying on him. Going against everything that the world would have us try and rely on. Whatever success that we think that we've built that outside of, 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 of Christ, you know, you can't rely on that. The Bible says very clearly, it says that it's, uh, it's built not on a solid foundation. It's like building a house on sand. The winds come and they beat against it and boof, it's collapsed. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, when I read that scripture as well, when, um, how many people do we know that has turned away and aren't following Jesus anymore, that started the race with you, but have just, for whatever reason, just, just gone, you know, just not, not don't want to run no more, that have found it so difficult that they've just, um, yeah, they're just not running that race with you anymore. And it might, it's not that it might have been that they'd, something massive came along and boom, it, they just wiped them out, which is something that we would think is something you'd expect. Oh, maybe they are going to be feeling quite, it's going to be quite difficult because whatever's come along, that's really serious. You know, not even that. Maybe it's just be that over time, something's just chipped away because this is what the devil does. He just chips away over time, little, little bit by little bit. Is, he doesn't come into your life and just crash. He, um, he just comes and chips away and people do stop running the race and they, they end up leaving church and, and maybe they're in the last 12, 18 months they're not, not on Zoom no more we need to pray for these people you know when things have got tough and they're no longer walking with, with Jesus and they're outside of meeting and the fellowship we need to pray for them even turn up at the door and just try and save them from the flames, you know, in any way that we can. I don't know if there's anyone that's, that's in here now or, or watching online that doesn't know Jesus. I know my family's tuned in, a lot of my family. I've only, only had them into church twice and this is the second time. Yeah, and the first time when I'm speaking a word, and I thank, thank you, Jesus. I'll be honest, I wasn't actually going to uh, invite them. I was going to, and they were going to be able to watch it back. And then I felt the Lord say to me, make sure you invite all of them. <laughs> and I want to tell you this, though. Anyone that's, that's in here now who doesn't know Jesus, anyone that's watching online, Jesus loves you. I said it right at the beginning to all, all my brothers and sisters in there. Jesus loves you. I love you. Jesus loves you so much and he died for you. And I, I, Dom isn't just coming up here and saying this. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're filling hearts by your presence. You're speaking to hearts. I can feel you feel, feeding the words to me, Lord, as I'm speaking now. I just thank you, Jesus, that your presence is doing unimaginably more than I can do. I'm just sharing my heart and my, my testimony that you've given me to share. And I'm trying to unpack these scriptures and, and allow you to move through me because I'm your willing vessel. Not running no more. Thank you so much. That's what I would say to every one of us. Is that we just need to wholly rely on Jesus. And know that he loves us so much. And this Jesus that I'm talking about now, for people that don't know him. Believe me, he's one to really trust and hold on to. And really just know that he is the best thing that can ever happen to your life. And the only thing that truly matters to your life as well. 
This life is but a breath. Compared to eternity, it's just a drop in the ocean. Pausing just a little bit because I'm just trying to see where to go next. But I think it's a good time just to just to reflect, you know, on everything that's been said. And I know God has spoken what He needs to say to you. You know, the Holy Spirit has just counselled you and comforted you. <clears throat> Do you know, I'll just end on this, start to wind down on this um, last little bit. It's verse 71. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, verse 70 and 71. And Jesus replied, have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who though one of the twelve was later to betray him. <clears throat> you know, that's a scary thing, isn't it? For me, that, that scared me for quite a, quite a while, thinking that Judas met Jesus, son of God, in bodily form, doing all the wonders and and miracles and powerful signs that, that he did, you know, still just rules. But we only got a snippet of what he was doing when he was on earth. Judas spent that time with Jesus and still didn't get it. And I'm not trying to put the fear factor in there, but if the Holy Spirit uses it that way, then you heed, you heed it, don't you? But there's, he spent three years, three years with Jesus. I probably spent more than three years running away from the call of God. That's scary, man. And I, I run with everything now. When, when, when I know a call on my life and I know what Jesus is telling me to do, I just run towards it because I got to a place where what can you expect when you resist God and you don't do what you know he's telling you to do, when, when you run away from the things he's calling you to. That, and I pray that none of you will, will, will ever be in that place but we do. We hear testimonies all the time. I'm sure if you could all be given a microphone, you'd, you'd be able to. You'd be able to share. Some, maybe, maybe a few, you know, where we've just resisted and and not done what we should do. But God is good, and He's faithful to carry the work on to completion. If we're trusting Him. And, and we get back in line, we dig in, and we just lift our voices to him every morning praying. Just let him take the reins of our life. And no matter how hard it gets, we know that we'll be sustained. Because this life is just a breath. We'll know at the end of it, when we exhale, <laughs> We can stand before Jesus and we can, we can look with somewhat confidence, you know, and just, and just say, Lord, I did my best. I knew you were so worth it, Lord. It was tough. There was so many difficult times. I even think I was going to make it sometimes, but I'm here and I love you. <coughs> and I laid down my life because you were worth it every single time. even to the point of death. And I thank you, Jesus. Because we will all meet him. It's just what we've got to say when we get there. Because like the, the Bible says, doesn't it? We're all going to get a chance to hear the word of God. I thank you, Jesus. You know, there's, for anyone that doesn't know Jesus, 
in here or online. You're being introduced to him right now. This Jesus I'm talking about. And he does love you. And you're precious to him. And if you're the only person on the, on the earth, he would have died just the same, being nailed to a cross. The perfect Tony sacrifice for your sin. <clears throat> and I'll lead you in a prayer. Lead you in a prayer that is going to take you straight to him. Straight to him. Jesus. Jesus, I know there's someone in this. When this man's talking, I know there's someone in it. And I'm sure I need you. My heart's telling me I need you. It's the presence I feel and I know. From the words that were being read. It has to be something. It has to be you. What else can it be? My life is... My life is what it is. But if truly my life is a bit of breath, a drop in the ocean, compared to eternity, and you came to save me, to keep me away from hell, and back with you and the Father in heaven, and teach me everything I need to know, and I ain't running. I give you my heart. I surrender wholeheartedly to you. Fill me with all of you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. If anyone's prayed that prayer for the first time, do get in touch. You're watching on Facebook now, so you can just message across to the team and, and we'd love to get to know you and, and, and encourage you and teach you everything that we can and, and introduce you more and more and more to Jesus. Thanks, guys. Amen. Thank you, Dom. Should we give him a round of applause? That was great. Thank you, Dom. It's hard, it's hard to be a Christian, but where else are we going to go? He has the words of eternal life. What a, what a great word for us. Thank you, Dom. Um, we're going we're gonna to worship God now, so the, if the band want to come up. Um, the things that Dom was saying just reminded me of a verse from Hebrews 10 that says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. Dom mentioned that, as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And we're going we're gonna to have this song. This song is a great chance for us just to, to turn to Jesus, knowing that it's, it's hard. It's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to follow him. But there's nowhere else we can go apart from looking to him. And after this song, we're going to have an opportunity to do what, exactly what that scripture said, to encourage one another. Um, and this microphone's set up here. And, you know, we, it'd be great if people kept it relatively short, but it'd be nice to hear from a few different people with an encouragement for us to keep on going. Because it's hard, isn't it? Like Dom said, it's hard to keep on going. But let's encourage one another. So as we worship, just ask the Lord, Lord, what, would, what, what verse or what word or what image or anything do you want me to encourage the people in this room with? And then we'll make some space for that together. So let's stand. Um, fix your eyes on Jesus, look to him, let's stand together.
We started in Acts 2, where Peter read out that in the last days, God will pour his spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Hope Church, if you're a Christian, the spirit of God lives in you. I just want to call us to, to encourage one another, as the Bible tells us to. So the microphone, the little thin, thin one there, uh, is on. And if you have something that you want, that you feel that God has placed on your heart to encourage us with as a church, whether whether short or a Bible verse or whatever, um, be confident. Don't feel any embarrassment. Come up and use the mic.
it says that we'll rise up as eagles. And some of you might know about the eagle. When they get old and they lose their feathers, they pluck them out. And then they go into the water and the oils start to revive the feathers again. And new feathers come. And it's almost like the eagle has a new life again. And I believe the Lord is saying we've got to hold on to the water of the word. And we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to wash us, to renew us. Because we've all had it hard in COVID this year. But I really believe that if we get into his word and we allow and we just allow his presence by the Holy Spirit to renew us, we will rise up as eagles. had some great encouragements there. Um, but Dom's message to us also, I think, gave a warning about Judas, someone that spent time with Jesus, that was with him, and yet still turned his back on him. And that, the next bit in that bit from Hebrews that I read just now that said, encourage one another, all the more as you see the day approaching, the very next verse says, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we've received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment. And Dom's message was, it's hard to be a Christian, but where else are we going to go? Jesus has the words of eternal life. And I think the encouragement, but also the warning that I feel like God would want to give, give all of us is don't run away from Jesus. When times get hard, run to him. Don't run away from him because life is only found, life in this life and life to come is only found by running to Jesus to him. And that's what uh, the next song that we're going to sing um, leads us into. Um, it's kind of like a song of lament about praising when things are hard, but it's a song of running to Jesus in the valley and not running away from him. So feel free to stand, feel free to kneel or to sit um, and reflect on the words of these song, this song as these guys sing to us. But in your heart, the encouragement I want to give to us is run to Jesus now.
Thank you, Jesus, that one day we will see you face to face in glory. Thank you that you will wipe every tear from our eye. Thank you, Jesus, that the former things, crying and pain, will be no more. We know this life is short and eternity is long. Help us to live for you every day that you give us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's been great to be together today. It's been great to have Dom share with us. Thank you so much, those that that, um, had a contribution earlier. Thank you to you guys for leading us so well in worship. It's hard to be a Christian, but where else are we going to go? He has the words of eternal life. So keep on going, Hope Church. Keep on going this week. Keep on going. I just want to read a a prayer that Paul prayed, uh, an encouragement. for us as we, as we end. In fact, why don't we stand just while I pray this um, and re- receive this prayer. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Fill us, God, this week, full to the measure of the fullness of God. Pour out your spirit on us as you did at that first day of Pentecost. Pour out your spirit on us to give us strength and power for living lives full of your love this week. We pray, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Remember, next week we're not here. We're down at the beach, and we'll let you know what beach that's going to be when we've decided what beach it's going to be. Enjoy the rain outside, and uh, we shall see you next week. Bye.